Welcome to the Socialized Forecast, March 3rd, 2024, the Tuesday edition of the Socialized Podcast, where we take you through the trends, original content ideas, and social media updates of the week. There is no way I am going to be able to top the update from last week about Risa Tisa. So this week, I want to talk about some TikTok music problems and the rumors that are happening because of the muted music on TikTok. Apparently, there's people saying, and I'm not saying they're right or wrong, there are hearsay happening that if you keep your videos on your your account with the muted music, that this is a community guideline violation. And supposedly, TikTok is not going to be sharing your videos to the For You page feed because of this. And I, I'm not going to say that I know one way or the other if the rumors are true, but what I am going to say about it is from my experience, I have had music muted on videos from 2020 when there were songs and copyright things that I guess they didn't negotiate. And so music was taken away. I've left those videos on my account just as they are. And sometimes they would negotiate the rights and then the music would come back and I would go back and notice, oh, now the music's back on the video. So I never really worried about muted music in general. So I find it strange that people would think that, or uh, that even TikTok would <laughs> do this, where they'd mute music. They muted the music. And so it's not our fault. So why would we as creators be penalized? So I want to just take a pause to say, if you're noticing that your videos are not getting on the For You page, I have easily over a hundred muted videos. I'm going to guess. I'm taking a guess because I post often and I use a lot of trending music. So I've got a lot, a lot. I've scrolled and I've said, wow, like every few videos I have a muted video. I have not done a thing with them and my videos are still going out to the For You page. So I don't want anyone to hear that announcement or people talking about it on TikTok and suddenly panic that they have to go through every single video and add the music back. I just don't believe that this is true. I can't fathom that they would do that when it's something that they caused. I don't think that they would penalize creators. So please don't stress out about it. I know there's a lot of people that were sending me videos saying, is this true? What should we do? I'm telling you that I'm going to be the guinea pig. I'm leaving mine up there muted and I'm hoping for the best. Occasionally, and this I'll add in case you have videos that are muted and you do want to change the music. I'm going to add that in certain cases, if you have a speaking video and you've added music to it, when you go to replace the music and then you tap volume, you may have the option to get the original speaking part back onto your video. I can't guarantee that this is going to happen because on a lot of mine, it doesn't work. And my voice is still muted even when I replace the music. But on a handful of the videos, I did a test on a couple and I tapped and I changed the music and my voice came back because there was no other music playing in my original video, just the music that I added. Sometimes when I have tutorials and I'm playing the music on my phone in my original video, I'm playing and I'm pointing and it's the music's playing. Those videos, the sound will not come back because I was playing other music in my original sound. So you'll have to experiment that with that on your own and see how it works for, for you and if your audio comes back on your speaking videos. The other update I want to talk about is just in general, my focus has been on editing recently. I feel that I'm seeing a lot of people struggling with editing. I can tell they're struggling because of the edits I'm watching and when their voices are being clipped and all the things. So I did put out last week the socialized strategy on Friday where we talked about editing tips and all the keys to making good edits. But I am going to continue the editing workshop beginner series. I think it's really important. A lot of people are learning and it feels so good when they leave the workshop and they feel that they've accomplished something and now they can do something they couldn't do before. It's very empowering and I want to make sure I can provide this ongoing. So I have another workshop coming up for beginners on March 12th and it is going to focus a bit on transitions because I think those are really fun and underrated on how easy they are to accomplish even as a beginner. So the link for that is in the show notes. It's also in the newsletter today. I urge you to join. We're going to have some fun doing some transitions and I will explain how they are done so you can do it. I'm very excited. Let us get into the trends for the week. Woo -hoo -hoo. All right. So our first trend is 
what do you want? And this one is a bit of, oh, sorry. <sighs> Darn it. I, I'm, I messed up. The first one is not, what do you want? I'm going to go back in order. The first one is tempting, but no thank you. And this is where uh, something that someone suggests, but you really don't like the idea, but you're pretending to like it by saying, uh, tempting, yeah, but no thank you. So it might be you're all cozied up in your jammies and someone wants you to go out and you pretend you really are tempted, but no thank you. So there's a lot of ways you can use this trend. It could be something business related where someone is trying to suggest a different way you operate your business and you're, you're very against it, but you try to entertain their idea. I'm going to say that that personally, this is a funny one for me because oftentimes Julie and I will be working together and I'll have a, what I like to call a harebrained idea. And she is so nice to me. She doesn't say, oh, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> She'll say, uh, we can think about that. And that's her way of saying tempting, but no, thank you. <laughs> so maybe she can use that. I might have to let her know she should use that one and, and throw me under the bus. Uh, the next one is what do you want? And this one is uh, when you can't make a decision, it's you can use this on either side. You can be the person asking someone to make a decision, and then that person is the one pulling out their hair and they can't make the decision. Or you could be the, the person that can't make the decision. So you can decide how you want to use this trend in your niche or in your realm by deciding which character you'd like to play in it. And it's helpful if you can play this off with someone else, but you certainly can do it alone and let one of the voices be in a sense off camera. So you could be the reactor or you could be the asker. So that is that one. And that's a fun one. And then the, the third one is one it's, I've seen this one a lot for a while. So I think this one's staying lit and it's called, it's texting who, and this is when you are looking at your phone and then you're kind of busted for doing something where you were, you weren't really doing what you were supposed to be doing on your phone. So then the audio is texting who, who, Oh, what are you doing? Texting. Who are you texting? My, my sister or whatever it is. I forget that exact audio, but the idea is that you got busted doing something. And I can also use myself as an example. A lot of times I'll be talking to some, my husband and I'll say, I'm going to, oh yeah, I'll look that up. And I pick up my phone and I go to look something up and then I'm immediately distracted because I've got a notification. Maybe it's a TikTok or something that's open on my phone already. And I co completely get sucked in. And then he's like, are you do, are you looking it up? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just texting someone. <laughs> So I'm really, really, I'm definitely on the brunt of that one often because I get sidetracked immediately when I pick up my phone, when I go to do something and I'm immediately distracted. All righty, let's move on to the original content ideas. This week uh, had a fun one, which is prompted by a, a video Julie made, which is talking about brand deals and how difficult it is, is to get brand deals, especially for older creators. So if you're struggling with that. I feel your pain and it is not as easy as people say it, it is. Oh yeah, you can just reach out to brands and they're going to jump at it and they're going to, you're going to have at it with all this brands throwing money at you. And it's really not the case. It's very, it's hard work to get a brand deal. You've really got to be determined. You have to put yourself out there again and again. You've got to pound the pavement. It's tough. But this first idea is, is spurred by that because the idea is make a video as if you had a brand deal. So think of what you would do if you did have that brand deal with that ideal brand that you love. What would you do to make a video to make it appealing that they would want to hire you? And I may take this on myself because there's some clothing brands I would love to collaborate with or be sponsored by when I do my outfit transitions. And so I was thinking maybe I, I would do something like that. And you can also do something where maybe you're doing a QVC salesy thing where you're trying to convince people to buy a, buy a product that you love. I, I definitely would say do it with something that you really do love because it makes it a lot easier to convince someone that you love it. This is going to be great for people in the TikTok shop. So think about how you would sell, how you would present. Think about a clever way to do it and isn't just talking about it necessarily. I think you can do it. I think it'll be fun. Second idea, tell us something we don't know about you. And when I was looking at this one, I thought, oh my gosh, I got to share something that people wouldn't know about me. <laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> and I really, I'm so out there about all the things that I, I could say in a past life, I could say, well, I bet you don't know that I can twirl a baton, but now I'm out there on TikTok twirling a baton. <laughs> and so everybody knows that. I, uh, I am able to write backwards so I can write backwards in script, but I have talked about that on lives. So I came up with one that I don't think that I know that nobody would know about me. And that is when I was in first grade, I fell off my bike. 
<laughs> the handlebar went in my eye. And I I have since then seen C double when I look down because it it did something to the bone on my the orbit of my eye. So when I look down with just my eyes without turning my head down, I do see double. And I always thought that was normal until somebody told me as an adult that that's not normal, Helen. <laughs> so there you have it. Something that nobody knows about me. All righty. The next one is uh, thinking about a regional favorite. This one's fun because if you're in a city that has something unusual or a small town where there's something that's specific to that small town. This is a fun one where you can highlight the things about where you live. And if you decide that you don't want to do it about a place you live, maybe you can pick a quote regional favorite of somewhere that you have been. And you can make a little video about that. Oftentimes those simple ones could be very relatable to people and they find their way to the people in those areas who will either agree or vehemently disagree. So good luck with that. I hope you have good vibes coming at you. But remember, even bad vibes are engagement, so don't get too distressed. For tutorials this week, the, the one I really want to highlight is to follow up with keyframes. What I did was I made a mini little overlay keyframe tutorial, which shows you in CapCut how to put an overlay on your scene and then how to make movement on that overlay using keyframes. So it's a very simple one. If you want the full keyframe recap that is posted on the website, hellosocialize.com, and you can find it under the, the workshops link. It is editing 105 covers keyframes, and you'll see the sign up for editing 106, which is going to be transitions, and we have that coming up. Alrighty. That's a wrap for the week. If you landed here from a podca podcast search, subscribe to the newsletter so you get all the links of the things that we're talking about with these trends. And you can find the free TikTok course and all the free workshops on hellosocialize.com. That's where we put everything conveniently so you can find it and have at it in terms of learning. We love to be here for that. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great week and we'll see you Friday. <laughs> Bye.